Hey everybody, Dan Moran here from Concierge Diamonds. It is Tuesday, the 8th of November, 2016. I voted. I hope you guys vote too. It's, this is important. So, if you haven't voted yet, you can come back to watch this later. Right now, stop what you're doing and go vote. Enough about that. So the topic for today's uh, live session is where should I go to get the best deal on a diamond? Where should I be looking online for deals on diamonds? And how do I evaluate diamonds that I see from, from various different sources, whether they be online, retail, or somewhere else? So there's a pretty vast world of diamonds online and diamond dealers online looking to sell you a stone. Probably the two best known websites for buying diamonds are Blue Nile and James Allen. Uh, those are both very large sites, they're big companies. Blue Nile is publicly traded. Uh, James Allen is still private, but they're both pretty significant. So one would think, let's leverage the power of the internet and use all these data mining techniques to you know, use this huge database of diamonds and get more value for myself. But that's more misleading than it is helpful in some cases. Certainly there is some value to be found in going online and seeing what people are, are offering certain certificates and certain you know, uh, cl uh, grades for price points. So as a way to calibrate your expectation, if I want to buy a one carat round GSI-1, it's very easy to go on Blue Nile and see how much are those going. That's great. So for that purpose, it's useful. But for the purpose of actually buying one, it's a little bit difficult to make the case that that's a great way to buy a stone. You know, when you buy a stone from someplace like Blue Nile or James Allen, you don't get to see the stone. James Allen has pictures of its diamonds. Blue Nile doesn't even have that. There's no picture. You're just buying the certificate. And anybody who's seen any of my posts on that topic before knows that I think it's a bad idea to buy a certificate. You should be buying a diamond. And of course, a certificate comes with it. But you need to be evaluating the stone, not the paperwork. And Blue Nile doesn't give you the opportunity to do that. Not only have you never seen the stone you buy from Blue Nile, but they've never seen the stone. The thing to remember is Blue Nile doesn't own any diamond inventory. Uh, neither is James Allen. They're brokers. They list other people's inventory. They list inventory that belongs to people like me. They call dealers and say, hey, do you have any stones you'd like to sell online? Um, and that bears digging a little bit deeper. Why would a dealer like me want to sell a diamond online? Because remember, Blue Nile and James Allen, their big thing is it's got to be cheap. You have to sell for cheap if you want to sell on our website. You've got to have a low price point. Well, why would I want to sell a particular diamond cheap? must be because I'm having trouble selling it through my traditional uh, channels. It must be because all the people who have had an opportunity to see it face-to-face -face didn't like it for one reason or another. Maybe the inclusion is ugly. Maybe it's a low luster, hazy, milky stone. Maybe it's greenish or brownish. It has an ugly overtone. Who knows? There are lots of reasons why a particular diamond might have a nice looking certificate, but the diamond isn't particularly nice. And look for videos I posted on YouTube and elsewhere showing examples of it. That's the kind of stone that often will make its way onto a site like Blue Nile. Dealers take out their trash on sites like that. So when you see a diamond on Blue Nile that seems to be a particularly great deal, you should stop for a second and ask yourself why. Why is somebody willing to fire sale a diamond? That's usually why. But there's something more than that. Let's say you look on James Allen and say, well, I can see the picture. The stone looks nice to me. How do you get questions answered? You can't call anybody at James Allen and say, hey, can you pull the stone out of the safe and look at it for me and describe it to me and expect any kind of honest, honest expert assessment. Not that James Allen is dishonest people. I wouldn't say that. I think they're nice people. But they can't give you an assessment on a stone that they don't have. The stone isn't there. So they can't go pull it out and look at it and tell you, oh, yeah, that's clean to my naked eye versus this one isn't. Oh, yeah, the stone is shiny versus it's dull. Oh, you know, the overtone looks like this in natural light. It looks like this in direct sunlight. It looks like that in the shade. If you, look, I've, I've said many times, the best way to buy a diamond is to see it for yourself with your own two eyes. But if you can't do that for whatever reason, it's pretty good if you have an expert who can look at it for you and act as your proxy, so long as you feel comfortable that that expert is being honest and straightforward and candid with you. So the ability to leverage an expert for forthcoming and candid advice is crucial if you can't see the stone for yourself. Blue Nile and James Allen don't give you the opportunity to see the stone for yourself or to get expert opinions on it. Now you might be thinking, yeah, but I can just buy the stone and they have return policies, right? So I can ship the stone to myself and if I don't like it when I get it, I'll ship it right back and get my money back. 
And that's true, you can do that. But what if you're not a diamond expert and you're not 100% sure what you're looking at when you get the stone? I'm not accusing these companies of doing anything dishonest or shipping you a stone different than what you bought. I don't think they would do that, let me be clear. But let's say that a perfectly lustrous shiny stone has 100% luster, okay? And let's say that you buy a stone off Blue Nile that's only 90% luster. That's not listed anymore on the certificate, right? That's something you need a trained dye to detect, how bright is the material. If you were to receive a stone that's a 90% luster in the mail, with nothing else to compare it against, you might not notice. You might not realize the difference between 90 and 100% luster. Whereas when you work with an expert, that expert can look and say, you know, this stone is a little bit dull in the material. Um, you can't quite put your finger on why, but maybe I'd stay away from this one and get a shinier stone. That happens, and it happens commonly on sites like that. And there are a lot of people around, uh, uh, walking around out there with rings from Blue Nile that have diamonds that aren't as shiny as they could or should be, and they just don't know the difference. So that's the problem with buying online. Uh, a lot of people think they're going to get a better deal online, and, and certainly it's more than legitimate to want to get the best, best value possible for your money. But it's not necessarily the case that you get a better deal online. At the end of the day, a diamond is a commodity. And so long as you're not paying, you know, Tiffany or Harry Winston markups, uh, you can get a good deal on a diamond in lots of places. You don't have to do it online. There are some things that it's better to buy with, with a person you can talk to. There are some things that it's better to buy in a consultative process rather than a transactional process, right? When you buy a diamond on Blue Nile, you're, you might as well be buying socks off of Amazon, right? You click here, put your credit card, and they ship you a box. I think a diamond is too important to buy that way. I think you should think about finding a jeweler who you can work with and think of that jeweler as a, as a consultant, as a professional who's there to advise you, like an accountant or a lawyer. Leverage that person's expertise because you're going to buy the commodity somewhere. So what you're really paying your jeweler for is that person's expertise. So that's the danger of buying online. Well, what about going to your local jeweler? Why not, why not go to Jared? Everybody on TV seems to say they went to Jared. I think the reason for not going to someplace like Jared or Zales or Kay is pretty straightforward and pretty obvious, guys. Those people have huge markups. They have massive overhead. They have enormous costs that somebody in my position wouldn't have in his worst nightmare, right? I don't have to spend that kind of money on these palatial stores and advertising and huge insurance costs and huge marketing costs and huge, it's, I mean, it's crazy. They have to sell for full retail price to stay in business. And nobody wants to pay that, do they? So that's the problem when you go to a store like that. You're gonna pay full, full price. Also, typically, they don't have super high quality merchandise. They need to cater to the lowest common denominator of jewelry buyer. So unless you're going to an ultra high-end store like a Tiffany or a Harry Winston, you're gonna be seeing so-so and, and so-so minus quality diamonds. So it's not a great place to get a beautiful stone. Um, and of course, if you do go to a Tiffany or a Harry Winston, it's gonna make Jared look cheap. Their prices are just straight out absurd. You pay so much money for that. So that's why not to go to your mall jeweler. That's why not to go to Tiffany or Harry Winston. Um, if you don't mind paying triple the right value, by all means, go buy a Tiffany. But I don't want to spend $3 to buy a $1 item, so I'm not going to go there. Um, so, yeah, the case for not buying at retail, pretty straightforward. Uh, another big problem with buying at a place like Jared is their sales staff generally doesn't have any training on diamonds, or very little training on diamonds. They, they're not experts in, in jewelry. There are people who saw a classified ad to make $22 an hour and went to go apply to work at Jared. Maybe they've had a two-day training course on jewelry. But if you have a question, they have a little index card with details about the ring and they're gonna read you that card. And if you need clarification, they're just gonna read you the card again. Not because they're bad people, not because they're dishonest people. They can't answer any questions because they don't know the answers. There are not experts there. So again, I think it's important to leverage someone's expertise and you can't do that if there's not an expert in the building. So I avoid those buildings. All right, so if you shouldn't buy online, and if you shouldn't buy at Jared, and if you shouldn't buy at Tiffany, what does that leave you? Well, it leaves you local mom and pop jewelers, family jewelers, and it leaves you private jewelers or dealers like me. Those are two pretty good ways to buy a diamond ring. Um, of course, 
you'll probably pay a little more at your local mom and pop jeweler than you will with a dealer. But there's the advantage that you'll probably have a local mom and pop jeweler. So that's probably a good place to start. You can always go look and see, hey, what does so-and-so have to offer? Or you can call an expert like me and uh, I will provide you. I've worked with people all over the country and all over the world. And I'll provide you pictures and videos and various uh, representations of my diamonds and of my jewelry. If you're uh, not able to come and meet with me in person, if I can't get to you, then we can make it work. Of course, I'd love to see all of my clients face to face if I can, but sometimes the geography is not practical. So that's the question of where should I buy and how. Maybe not online, maybe not big box jewelry stores. Mom and Pop's a pretty good alternative, and your best alternative is to go to a dealer, go to a store. I'm certainly not the only one in the world doing that, right? I like to think I'm pretty good at it, but there are other people who, who operate in that space. And if you look around, I'm sure you can find someone. So that's where to buy. How to get value? Well, the best way to get value is to know what you're looking for. And that comes to both the stone and it comes to the ring design. So when you know what you're looking for, you make it easy for, for the dealer to provide you options to show you where your money should be spent efficiently. If a customer comes to me and says, listen, I want to buy a diamond ring, I don't know how much I want to spend, and I don't know what I'm looking for, it leaves me with very little in terms of direction to help guide me. But if somebody comes to me and says, listen, I know I want to buy a cushion cut diamond that I want to spend about $10,000. Okay, now I have a starting point. Now I have a basic direction and I can guide from there. And then it's easy for me to put together options and say, okay, well, Here's what $8,000 looks like, and here's what $10,000 looks like. And if you want to know, here's what $12,000 looks like. So being able to guide your dealer in the right direction helps a lot. The other thing to know is ring design. What would you like your, your perfect ring to look like? And that's something that you and your jeweler can work on together, of course. But having a sense of, oh, I definitely want a halo of diamonds around the center, or oh, I want to make sure I have a ring with baguettes, or oh, my, my, my future uh, fiance loves yellow gold, so I want to make sure it's in yellow. Whatever, whatever stylistic guidance you have is helpful because it gets us going in the right path. That's another reason, by the way, why I always recommend buying a custom-made engagement ring rather than buying something that's ready-made. When you walk into your mall jeweler, they'll have 100 rings in a case, and the guy's job is to sell what's in the case. He has an agenda. That agenda is take something out of the showcase and exchange it for money from you. When you sit with somebody like me, I don't have that agenda. My agenda is to make sure you wind up with exactly the ring you want. And because I'm custom making it, I have no reason, I have no incentive to try to include features or, or costs that are not relevant. All I care about is get, having you be happy with your ring. So when you buy a custom made ring, you're not paying for frills, additions, and, and various features that maybe you don't want. Maybe you don't want those little diamonds going down the side. Maybe you don't need the extra second halo, whatever it happens to be. If you go to a jewelry store, you gotta buy the closest thing to what you had in mind. Well, you shouldn't buy the closest thing when you're buying an engagement ring that someone's gonna wear forever. You should buy exactly what you want. And the way to do that is to have it custom made. Now, people often are afraid of custom made. They think, they hear the word custom, they think, oh, it's gonna be crazy money. It's gonna be out of my budget. The, the, the secret here to know is that custom doesn't mean expensive and it doesn't mean it's going to cost more than a ready-made ring. In fact, if you buy it from a good wholesaler, from a good dealer, often it will cost less. Why? Because again, I'm not paying for features that you don't want, so my cost basis is lower. And also, because I don't have 500 rings sitting in a showcase, I'm not paying some bank interest so that I can sit on inventory. You know, keeping all those rings in a showcase costs money. So you have to rem remember that the overhead of holding inventory is real. And when you buy a ring like that, you're paying that overhead because they have to make it back somehow. So just-in-time manufacturing for custom rings keeps that overhead to zero. And it's a real cost uh, efficiency and it's a real benefit to people who buy our custom ring. So that's my short primer on where to buy a ring, how to buy a ring, and how to ensure you get value. To summarize, Try to buy from a family jeweler or a dealer. Have some idea what you're looking for in a diamond to guide your jeweler. Know what ring design you'd like to have, and that's something you should work on collaboratively with your jeweler after you select a diamond, because some jewelry designs are more appropriate to some stones than others, and if you're working with an expert, they'll guide you. 
And of course, the underlying theme. Find an expert you feel comfortable with and work with that expert. If you don't know jewelry, know your jeweler. Find someone to help you. Please feel free to post questions. I'll get back to you uh, as soon as I can. I hope you found this useful. Thanks, guys.